text is Gospel lesson for today in the fifth chapter of Matthew. In Jesus' name, Amen. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Jesus spoke these words in the Sermon on the Mount in Galilee to people who regularly traveled south to Jerusalem to present their offerings on the Temple Mount. It was the great altar located before the doors outside the temple. Thousands of worshipers brought sacrificial animals to be offered on this high altar in order to receive forgiveness. Matthew wrote these words to be read to new Christians who anticipated coming to the Lord's altar for the Eucharist. So which altar is it? Both. The Old Testament altar and liturgy pointed forward to the ful be fulfilled in Christ's self-sacrifice on the cross and his presence in the sacrament of the altar. Today, Jesus directs our attention to the altar in front of this sanctuary. He's talking about the divine liturgy of word and sacrament in which the beautiful ritual flow is suddenly interrupted. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Two elements shape the meaning of Jesus' words for us today. Liturgy and anger. Some things never change. Matthew 5 deals with worship wars, but not the war between traditional and contemporary worship styles. Jesus is talking about the wars that go on among <coughs> Christians who come together for worship and expect to receive the reconciling body and blood of the Christ in the Lord's Supper. Now they harbor anger and resentment toward one another. It's dangerous to go to the liturgy when you're angry. More specifically, it is dangerous to go to the altar when you are angry. Forgiving others or asking others to forgive you is not optional for those who desire to come to the Lord's Supper. Sin and anger against others are an unavoidable part of life in this fallen world especially among those who are the closest to us. Many family dinners have been disrupted by angry and cruel words. Hurt feelings, hatred, and bitterness can last for hours or days and sometimes never get resolved. Then comes Sunday, and the family is again invited to the Lord's house for the family dinner? Do we continue to feud or do we reconcile? It's a dangerous thing to approach the altar with someone with whom you refuse to be reconciled. To despise someone at the altar into whom the Lord has put his body and his blood is to despise the Lord's body and blood. <coughs> One of the oldest liturgical manuals was written about the same time as Matthew's Gospel, the Didache. And in chapter 14, the Didache warns congregations, on the Lord's day, you assemble and break the bread, but let no one who has a quarrel with his companion join with you until they have been reconciled. For this reason, ancient liturgies included the kiss of peace after the service of the word, 
and prior to the service of Holy Communion. Reconciliation and peace with others must preclude reception of the body and blood. The church visions of the 20th century reintroduced this ancient custom into many churches in the form of a handshake accompanied by the words, peace be with you. Instead of being understood as serious business, the peace sometimes degenerates into a confusing time of jolly good mornings, hugs, and friendly chit-chat. As annoying as this may be to liturgical tourists, there is something far worse that can take place. That is when the peace is refused or avoided. You see the offending party over on this side of the church. And you're just very glad that you will not have to exchange a seemingly innocent little phrase, peace be with you. Or in our church, look at them across the communion rail at our church. Now, those that come from this side will commune long before you ever get there on this side. You see, this round communion rail is intentional. You have to face the bitterness, the hurt, and the anger. How oh, the truth is, what they've done to you, yeah, and what they've said to you, well, you can't even muster one ounce of love, compassion, and mercy to that two-faced fool. Thankfully, if the church is full, you can avoid them by commuting at a separate table. There's those who, done, who have done that, and there's those who have ended up at the same communion rail looking right across at those they want to avoid, and then they play the game. I want to go to the Lord's Supper and not be reconciled. So they've gone to another church. Anyone who has not experienced such fears has never been stabbed in the back by a smiling, pious brother or sister in Christ. When it comes to pastoral practice, it is much easier to do a doctrinal check on an individual's confession of the real presence than to bring about real reconciliation. Furthermore, an examination of one's own heart shows that reconciliation is a bloody, hurtful, messy business. But Jesus tells us, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. That is what Jesus himself did. He left the temple. Without complaint, he was taken outside Jerusalem to Calvary in order there to reconcile the world to himself by the shedding of his blood. Reconciliation is a bloody, painful <clears throat> business. Jesus then explains that the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. You should imitate Jesus, whose perfect life and merciful death reconciled the world with himself. But all of our imitating will never be enough, and it'll never be finished. And so we go on imitating, and we go on reconciling. But more important, we give thanks that Jesus left the altar in the temple to reconcile with his brother. And I use that word brother in the biblical sense 
which includes all males and all females. We are that brother. Our reconciliation cost him his life. It was a bloody mess, but it was perfect, complete, and it is finished. In him, we can now return and offer our gifts. In Jesus' name. Amen. And the peace of God which best to understanding and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Amen.